Welcome to St. Matthew's United Church's 100th anniversary service. <laughs> I go by the Reverend Bridget Maya Douglas, and I am the minister here part time. And along with Reverend Douglas Ducharme, the minister of uh, Bloor Street United Church, we welcome you along with our music directors, Paul Jessen and Mikey Zarak. Welcome to this safe space. Both of our congregations who worship here are affirming, which means that we affirm the rights of the two SLGBTQA plus communities intentionally, explicitly, publicly. Love is love. St. Matt's and Bloor Street are faith communities that are diver diverse, who stand for social justice of all, regardless of where you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. And on this Sunday, we have a special guest, the Reverend Eleanor Scarlett, who was a member here at St. Matthew's United Church before she was ordained as one of the first black women to go through the United Church of Canada process. She always kind of smiles at me when I say that. But see, I follow in her footsteps, right? So yes, Eleanor, thank you thank for you. for breaking through. You were ordained in 1996, correct? Okay. She has served churches in Nova Scotia and Toronto and the Toronto, the GTA area. While serving a three-point charge in the Dufferin Peel Presbytery, she had a strong call to transitional ministry. She got training and has been an intentional interim minister since 2005. As the intentional interim minister, she has served the former conferences of Toronto, London, Maritime, and Hamilton conferences, and most recently, Shining Waters and Horseshoe Falls Regional Councils. Eleanor is an avid gardener, so she's excited about the clementus, is it called? I, I don't know these plants. She's excited about the plant that she won last night and loves taking her dogs on long walks and frequent drives. Welcome back, Eleanor. Welcome. We are pleased to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Let us acknowledge the sacred land on which we gather. This has been a site of human activity for over 15,000 years. It's been proven. This land is the territory of the Huron, Wendat, Seneca, and Patoon First Nations, and most recently, the Mississauga of Credit. Today, the meeting place of Tuckeronto is still a place full of community, honored by several indigenous peoples. May we be mindful of the broken covenants and the need to strive to be right with all relations. Let us ground ourselves for worship. <clears throat> We light the, this candle today to remember those who have gathered in this sacred space before us. We come knowing that the light reminds us of Jesus, our sibling and friend, light of the world, the light of Christ. We're gathered here in this place at this time to celebrate St. Matthew's centennial anniversary and to give thanks to the visionaries of St. Clair Methodist who embraced God's call to something new. St. Clair Methodist became a reality following a series of house gatherings and prayer meetings as new settlers had embarked on this community. <clears throat> this was a time of uncertainty. <clears throat> Sorry. 
yet they never lost their faith in God. St. Clair Methodist moved to this site in 1924, and, they, and in 1966, they merged with St. Columbia, and the name was changed to St. Matthew's United. St. Matthew's United has a rich legacy that is passed on through generations, including some of you that are here today. Here we are today standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. And as we do, let us joyfully celebrate our time together and give thanks to God for accompanying us thus far. In the reading from Psalm 122, the psalmist reminds then that the community then and us today to rejoice whenever, wherever we go. And whenever we enter into God's house, we should always give thanks. This, my siblings, is what we're here to do today, as well as to give thanks to God as we celebrate what God has done and continue to do for us. In the reading from the Gospel, Luke 2, that text gives a vision of the passing of the torch from one generation to the next. Here we see the 12-year-old Jesus becoming aware of his calling and leaning into it. The text reminds us that the young Jesus went to the festival with, according to the custom with his parents. When the festival ended, Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. When his parents discovered that he was not with them, they began to look for him. They found him three days later in the temple sitting among the teachers and listening to them, asking questions of the elders and learning from them. When they found him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Jesus replied, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know I had to be in my father's house? This was a turning point in Jesus' life, as well as for his parents and the wider community. There was an awakening. For the first time, they realized that there was something profound about this child. As the congregation, as this congregation grew, the need for a new building was envisioned. The land was donated and the cornerstone was laid on April 12, 1924. The church was dedicated on November 23, 1924. This is the story of the beginning of St. Matthew's. I am sure that there are many stories of your connections to St. Matthew's. I am sure that many of you here today have stories that you would like to share, stories that are somewhere up on the PowerPoint, some was up on the walls last night, some are still up all over the place, stories you have heard and stories you have experienced and shared yourself. But I want to give you a glimpse of my story and my connection to St. Matthew's. I arrived in Canada in the early 1970s as a young adult. I came with a letter of transfer from the Methodist Church of the Caribbean Jamaica District to the United Church of Canada. Upon my arrival, I visited numerous United Churches within the community I was living. Most of them are no longer there. And none of those churches were welcoming. I, I came to an experience, I came as an experienced and gifted leader in the church 
with histories in youth and lay leadership and local leadership throughout the church in Jamaica. So I was very disappointed with the rejection. I spoke to my mentor back home, the Reverend Evans Bailey, and he said to me, maybe you should find the Reverend Gabriel. He might be able to help you. But at that time, I did not. I found an interdenominational church where I was warmly welcomed. It was at this church that my call to ministry was affirmed. However, this community of faith told me they would not be able to walk with me on my journey toward ordination because they were an independent church. At the time, I was still a nurse working at a local hospital. I had a con conversation one day at lunch with some colleagues. And surprise, surprise, one of those colleagues was Mrs. Ruby Collimore, who was at the table. And she said to me, Eleanor, why don't you try St. Matthew's United? They will understand, and they will accept you. I later started coming to St. Matthew's transferred my membership, became a member on the same day that Liz McKenzie joined the church. We became members together. And there is a story to Liz. So I began ministry, and shortly thereafter, so did Liz. I was the youth group leader the senior Sunday school teacher, and we had an amazing group of children and youth in this church. This place was a buzz. We not only participated within the church, but also within the wider community in outreach programs such as Out of the Cold. We were involved in joint endeavors with other youth groups, that includes retreats, camping, etc. I remember we took our youth group with a joint youth group endeavor with University Presbyterian Church Youth Group. And this was only in Caledon, but it seemed as if we drove forever. <laughs> and we went shopping for stuff we would need for breakfast and snacks. Surprise, surprise, the kids brought the snacks in, but left the rest on the, on the balcony. So the next morning, we're up to do breakfast. We could not find the stuff. So we went out and we found what was left on the balcony because all the fruits were gone. The, 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 the you know, the animals had a good feast. So we had a lot of experience with this church and the youth group and the Sunday school. And so the psalmist reminds us to be glad. They said, let us go into the house of God, where in our feet shall stand within God's holy courts. And this is a testament to this place. St. Matthew's has become a place of refuge within this city, a place where social and political discourse are lived out and lived into. As we celebrate our 100th anniversary, let us highlight some of our achievements. St. Matthew's worked in partnership within, within the city to build Brockendale House a senior residence, and to this day continue to be partner with, with this open, with which, which would open door drop-in program for those in our communities who are marginalized and socially isolated. This building is used by diverse groups. This is a testament to what we're called as children of God to do and be. 
So as followers of Christ, we're called to live out our faith by being Christ's hands and feet in this world. This is at the core of St. Matt's faith. I would like to recognize and give thanks to ministers who were here during my time, especially, and especially to those who supported me during my time at Emmanuel College. Many of you, are, many are no longer here with us, but some are. Lynn is here today. She was a staunch supporter of me during my time here. The malls, Mrs. the Collymores, the Ardley, and a bunch, many are no longer with us. The Reverend Frank Gabriel, Greta and Michael, Greta Vosper and Michael Coyman. So those were some of the people that helped to nurture me during my time in this place. So as some of you might have remembered, I did my internship in Coal Harbor in Nova Scotia. And fondly remember, I don't know how many of you knew this was happening. Every single month, I got a care package from Beth. And a updated card on the events that was happening in this church and beyond. I cherish those moments. I remember whenever I was feeling sad or homesick, I would read the cards that Beth would have sent. She always put a book because she knew I was an avid reader in the, in the package. And I was comforted in knowing that I was not alone. I knew that I was lovingly held in prayers with deep gratitude, I say thanks. So as we look towards the future, it is my prayer that we do so with the boldness of the 12-year-old Jesus, who knew who he was and to whom he belonged, and to what he was called to be and do. May you do so like those early settlers who recognized that they needed a place to worship, and they built the first church and successive churches, including this very building. As you look toward the future, do so with the same spirit and the same God who was present with those who came before us. As we look to the future, let us do so with deep spirituality bold discipleship, and daring justice. The world that we're in now is no different from it was during the 1924 and 1925. There were conflicts and wars taking place. Yet the community was able to build a church, to move in and to celebrate their accomplishment with thanksgiving. Psalm 122 reminds us to be glad whenever we enter the house of God, to give thanks and to pray for peace. Those same words echo through for our world today. This community recognized all that was happening in the world then and with the boldness of Jesus, their liberator, they pressed on. My siblings, when we are Christ-centered, we become bold. When we become bold, we become daring. St. Matthew's United moved to this site at the turn of the century and became St. Matthew's United a member of the United Church of Canada in 1925. As our anniversary moves into the next century, let us do so without a doubt that the same God who walked with our ancestors of the faith is present with us today and will journey with us 
toward the next century. And so, as a people of faith, we give thanks and praise to God for the gift of this place and the hope of God that something new and exciting will continue in this place. And the people of God say, Amen. Friends, as we leave this place, let us go forth into the world, into our communities. Let us go forth knowing we are God's hands and feet in this world. Let us go into the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us go and teach by example that we're loved and let us love in return radically. Go and love. Amen. Amen.